Welcome to the All Things Combo Box provided by MasterFlash.net. Best way to view this is by going full screen since it is uh, 1280 by 720 or something like that. So I'll go full screen and the video will clear up. Hope you enjoy it. Alright, so we've got a lot of stuff to cover for the Combo Box. Uh, before I go into any kind of details, I just kind of want to uh, bring in the source files that you downloaded. Obviously, you've seen these already. You've got CS3 source files, CS4 source files, plus the video files. If we click into the source files, you'll find some extra files in here. This is basically all of the testing files that I use. Sometimes I tend to uh, change the code or go in a different direction. So basically, I include this so you can have everything that I've tested, messed around with, plus additional notes. Sometimes notes don't end up in my original files, but there will be inside of the progress files. All right, um, back out here, these will be the XML files that we're going to be using for the uh, XML part of this. And of course, this will be the original file that I used throughout the tutorial and uh, any kind of progress files which allow you to work inside of the folders if you did extract the folder completely. All right. So uh, back in here, this is ultimately what our file is going to look like. Uh, basically, just have a few frame labels set up and uh, just some areas in here just to make it real simple because ultimately you're going to do whatever you want to do and dress this up how you want so I just made it very clean and simple alright if I publish this out just to show you what we're doing here now I thought what would be kinda of cool for this is to show you how to create these combo boxes so they basically work when you roll over them not a lot of people know how to do that and as far as a few requests that I got, that's definitely one of the options for the combo box. So if we set this up to roll over without clicking on it, it opens up, roll out, it closes, all right, for uh, basically all directions. Now, one of the errors that happens with the combo box is when you roll over it, and if let's say that a user left the top of it, it stays open. So one of the extra items I included in this was basically a timer that we can set to shut automatically just like that. Now, of course, when you do this and you click outside of it, it'll shut, but basically right now I have it on a five-second timer, which uh, will close it automatically. That way it's not a big mess and there's 25 menus open up if uh, that's what you do. All right, so fairly simple. We'll go ahead and get rocking on this. Uh, this file right here is the actual XML file that we're going to be using. I've just opened it up through Flash. So uh, obviously if you want to uh, use it in Dreamweaver, go ahead. I'm just doing it in here so it kind of spares you me jumping back and forth between softwares. Works just the same. All right. Uh, just make sure it's saved as an XML file before you open it. Okay. All right. So to set this up, go ahead and set your heading up for your XML up here just like this. And what this stuff is right here is basically what I'm going to use to basically divide information that's in XML. What I generally do is create one document that controls everything, no matter how big the site is. Uh, really, you use these to kind of, you know, basically as a blocker so another file won't come in and call this stuff right here, all right? Uh, so basically, you can call this whatever you want. Just make sure this name is the same name as this name. We won't be using Flash to uh, call this data right here, all right? But uh, we will be using Flash to call the next bit. All right, so to set this up, I'm just going to say menu underscore items, less than sign, I'm just going to come down a bit, greater than sign, forward slash menu underscore item, less than sign. All right, now what we're going to do in here is basically we're going to call this from Flash and tell it that whatever's inside of here is going to be one specific item inside of the drop down menu for the combo box. And we will be using this name to call from Flash. So uh, if you want to call this whatever you want, just be sure to uh, make the change when we get to it inside of the action trip. All right, other than that, what we're going to end up doing is basically calling for the label, greater than sign, label, less than sign, and call this one home, greater than sign, forward slash, label, less than sign. All right, next line, greater than sign, path, less than sign. Go ahead and put whatever kind of path you want in here. Now for this first part, I am just going to be using URLs. I just want to make sure that you guys uh, know how to do this because ultimately creating menus, they do work with external links and things like that. Uh, but by the end of this tutorial, you'll definitely know how to uh, work this with uh, frame labels inside of uh, the actual flash file. All right, so with that done, that's basically all you have to do 
So what this is right here is we're going to be calling this right here as the label that gets loaded inside of the actual label of the combo box. Now you can call this whatever you want. I just thought it'd be a good idea to make sure that you know that this text right here is going to get loaded into Flash. I'm sure most of you would be able to tell the difference, but uh, it's kind of good. And for the path, we're going to use this as the actual target selected item. All right. So basically, whenever they select on the home item inside of the drop down menu, it's going to go to this URL. So that's really all we have to do. So if we wanted to, to make extra menu items, just copy it, paste it, paste it, paste it, and so on. All right. Uh, what I'm about to do, instead of typing up all of this stuff and wasting your time, I'm just going to go and grab some stuff that I already have written out. Just going to copy it and uh, just going to delete this or replace this. So I'm just going to paste this in place. Doesn't look too good, does it? Go ahead and straighten this up. All right, so once you have that all set up, go ahead and save it. Basically, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have a home label in there, contact, master list, master flash store, and create account. All right, so uh, once you get that set up, let's go ahead and hop back into our main file. And in here, I have basically have the timeline set up for us already. So go ahead and add some actions, layers, and combo box layer. And what we can do is go ahead and get a combo box out onto the stage here. So let's get our components out. And if you don't know how to do that, come up here to Window, grab Components. All right, what we're looking for is the combo box right here. Once you have this set up, just go ahead and drag it out on the stage. All right. Sets up in the library. All right. So what I'm going to do first, we're going to go ahead and stretch this out a little bit to fit all the text. And we need to put an instance name on this so we're know, we know what we're going to refer to it from the action script pass. All right. So I'm just going to call this uh, menu underscore CB. All right. So once you get that instance name on there, let's go ahead and jump into our action script. If you don't know how to get your actions out, you can come up here to Windows, select Actions, or just hit F9 on your keyboard. All right, so to uh, start this off, make sure I got the uh, right frame. Should be good to go. Yeah. All right, to start this off, we need to import a few things that allow us to actually work with some of the list events, the uh, flash events, and the uh, you know loaders and things like that. So. Let's go ahead and set this up as import flash.net dot asterisk semicolon import flash dot events dot event with a capital E import fl dot controls dot base button. All right, now this isn't the actual definition for this, and this isn't really important to what we're doing in here. But the base button, you can kind of consider the base button as when you select down on the drop down menu for the actual uh, combo box. That's kind of what comes into play. Now, is it going to do any good for us in this XML file? Probably not. Uh, the reason why I included this is because right before I hit the record button, I decided that I was going to include the actual combo box audio player that is a separate product on the site. And we will be using this, so just thought I'd just kind of keep it in there so you know to keep it plugged in when you're using the combo box. All right, so the next part, import fl.events.list event, semicolon. That basically allows us to uh, basically close and open the combo box by uh, event listeners and things like that. All right, without it, you wouldn't be able to. Okay, uh, so what we need to do is create a variable and name it our XML so we can say var combo box underscore XML colon XML semicolon var xml underscore loader equals new url loader opening closing parentheses semicolon all right so the first step of this is to actually request the xml file to get loaded into flash all right and what we can do is we can use our variable name for our xml loader right here all right so let's go ahead and set this up, xml underscore loader dot load, opening parentheses, new URL request, 
opening parentheses, opening quotation marks. Go ahead and put our XML file name in there. Closing quotation marks, closing parentheses, and another closing parentheses, semicolon. Now, this is one of those instances where you could put the direct file path. All right, and that's definitely not where that file is going to be sitting, but that is where you can plug that in. All right, since I'm working locally, and sometimes it's better just to uh, have this inside of the same uh, directory that you're working on in your flash file anyway, whether it's live or local. All right, uh, let's see. So what we need to do now is we need to set up a function for when the XML is is basically done loading. All right, and we're going to define an event listener in a little bit for calling this. So we need to say function XM or when underscore XML underscore load underscore is underscore complete opening parentheses event colon event closing parentheses colon void opening bracket to view the rest of the all things combo box tutorial you can find it on masterflash.net and uh, you'll be able to locate source files and anything relevant to the combo box we basically cover uh, something like 25 different ways to work with the combo box and uh, use it in your projects. All right.